have comedian turned musician David Oscar with me today. I like your hair. <laughs> I like yours too. Man. Um, so let's talk about your music okay. or your career, I should say. Okay. What have you been up to? Well, I've been putting some, you know, works, um, more musical works. Um, I have an album ready, Cosmic Vibrations. Uh, it's got about twenty-one records in it. So, I mean, if, if, if you are looking at it from the perspective of, that it takes a lot of um, a lot of uh, creativity to put out, you know, such a number of records, then you know that I've been up to a lot of uh, creative work, if you like. Yeah. And, I'm just making some more music and trying to uh, put out the message. You were a comedian. Yeah. Do you still do that? Uh, well, it depends. You know, I sometimes when I post things on my social media, I get a lot of people laughing. Half of the time, the things I post for me, it's not, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to sound funny. Like I'm trying to say something. But the experience I've had over the past one, two years is like when I put out something, people will just come. And sometimes when I look through the interactions, by those who are liking it, those who are loving it. And there are a lot more who are also laughing. So now I'm like, okay, what's happening here? But um, comedy is like any other trade out there. You know, um, Once the money is good, or once the price is right, I can always be comedy. Let me explain something to you. Um, I'm an artist, right? Um, I create. So at any given time, uh, depending on the inspiration I have, I I create a piece, a work of art. Now that work of art could be music, it could be comedy, it could be poetry, it could even be a book, right? But so I always look for ways to express myself. Uh, as far as comedy is concerned, it also takes a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it, firepower here to be able to compose your jokes, test it around, rehearse it, and then present it on stage, right? I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that's something um, that's very easy to do. Okay, my type of comedy is more intellectual. So before I go on stage, I need to prepare. I need to write for my show. Now, where I've got into with this industry, if I do not have somebody who understands what it takes to, you know, be artistic in a comedic way, then people feel like, oh, we make us laugh. It doesn't work like that for me. If you want to see that art, that aspect of me, it's business. We can sit down and talk, and if you book me right, then it tells me, okay, fine, for the next one or two or three months, if the show is, say, in September or December, I can say, okay, I'm going to put everything else I'm doing on hold. No music writing, nothing. I'm just going to focus and write some gags for the show. Why? Because I've been paid to do it, and it's rewarded, right? At this point in time, for me personally, it's not about looking for platforms, if you know what I mean. Maybe several years ago, when I started pushing this whole agenda for my income out there, it was more of looking for space. Okay, now that the space has, has come, shouldn't I get paid? Yeah. Why do people still feel like because I started as a comedian, you know, even if you see me on the streets, I should just be jumping around and making you laugh. You know, in a, in a way, I also feel like the audience don't also understand the various kinds or types of comedy we have. So it's like when they see, excuse my language, when they see a funny face type of comedian, they assume that that's how comedy is. And so if you are not making us laugh that way, then you're not funny. It's some experience I've had in this market over the years, so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, but comedy is various. I mean, there is improvisation, there is uh, what do you call it, slapstick. There is a lot, you know. Uh, so, depending on the type of persona you have, you know, you're able to create your own art based on the personality you have. I cannot pretend to be uh, a very animated comedian. I'm not that type of comedian. I'm the guy who will stand on stage and be saying things. Yeah. And if you're not listening and paying attention, then you might not find me very funny. You know, like if you put six comedians in this room, I might not be the toast of the party because I'm like very quiet and calculated and just sit in my corner, you know. But if I'm booked properly to do stand up comedy in this country, people will be shocked, you know. Yeah, yeah, but for now, I don't get that kind of booking, so I don't pretend about it. And luckily for me, my art is not only limited to comedy, I can sing. So that is why I'm doing music. I don't know if this is this, this. So we can say you are quit comedy? No, 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 no. Pay me money. Is. Oh, so it's oh, more about the it's money. About, ah, why? When you work, you don't take me. Oh, okay. You get me? So for me, it's business, like any other business out there. You know, If you book me for your show and the price is right, I'm coming before you. you know, but until that happens, personally, I do not have any need to try to refund it to anybody, to try to make anybody laugh now. I have other things I'm trying to put my energies into. Music is one of them. You know, so, uh, 
So what's your plan for a music career? Uh, well, you know, um, I do world music, reggae, um, Afrocentric. So um, there has to be a vision, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you need to be able to know or see where you're going and, you know, take steps to want to get there. So for me, I'm just uh, looking for space. But let me say this, uh, as far as the music I do is concerned, I think that even the Ghanaian space is so small, right? So that's why I have targeted the world. Okay. okay, so my music is just out there like that, hoping and praying and believing that one day it was back again. So more musical works and... Um, if you give him money, you will do comedy for him. So it's more about your life. Now let's move to some other thing. A year ago, you said your girlfriend left you because you were depressed. Do you have a girlfriend now? <laughs> Why are you looking away? Uh, well, that happened like two years, maybe three years ago. Mm -hmm. But I had a chance to say it a year ago. Okay. That is why it sounds like a year ago. But it had happened before I said it. Right? Okay. Yeah, I have, I have uh, my music now that engages my attention, my emotions, my feelings and everything. So you your know. music is a girlfriend? No, until, no. you know, maybe you decide do to Do you just... have sex with music? Yeah, yeah, I do. Make love to music every other time, you know what I mean? Because oh. if you are trying to communicate something, through music on a piece of rhythm to somebody, you need to be able to have the capacity to make love to that rhythm or whatever it is that you're trying to turn up, to be able to give it to somebody who would also feel what you're trying to communicate. Otherwise, it becomes go back to my life. So you do doggy and all of that with <laughs> your music? Yeah, missionary, you know, yeah. We even do like it. It's a new style. Yeah. I can show you right now, right here. And she wants to see it. To your intruding <laughs> self, you said Shatawali does toilet music. Okay. Now that he's going international, he's done some with Beyonce. Do you still stand like that? Okay, let me clarify something. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people, and I think I would blame some of the bloggers, right? See, when you put out something, there's semantics and language, right? Okay. So now when you put out something, sometimes you are trying to communicate something. But if 10 people were listening to you, each of these 10 people will hear what you said and they will try to interpret it in their own way to their own audience. This is what I wrote to my Facebook wall. I said, anytime I listen to Stone Boy, Shatter sounds like toilet. I don't know how that became Shatter produces toilet as music. No, these are two different things. And I'm a musician too. So I know music and I know rhythms, right? So now when I listen, I, I'm just, I just went out there to put out my personal opinion, right? That when I listen to a particular artist, another artist sounds like toilets compared to that artist. Now, the reason why I said that is this. I mean, until that uh, uh, Bruhaha on the Ghana Music Awards, the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, that brought about the so-called unity, so unity we are seeing now between two, uh, the two artists. It had been a, I don't know, I would say a deliberate, consistent attempt by, you know, Shut that to consistently disrespect and belittle what somebody was was doing, like what he was achieving. You know what I mean? Today you have a collaboration with Beyonce and you want all of us to be clapping for you. Oh wow, so it works like that. What if somebody was to sue somewhere and try to belittle that? When it was happening to some other person, it was this, it was nah, it was this, and shut up all over the place trying to sound sorry for my language, but sound very unintelligible. You know what I mean? So I mean I'm also an artist working within the Ghanaian space and I believe that um, I have the right to also express my opinions. It is my opinion. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. You don't have to agree with everything I say, you know. But this is what I said. So I really do not know how that was misconstrued to mean that I say he produces toilets as music. That was not what I meant. You know, what I meant is what I've explained. In fact, it will interest you to know that when I when I started getting into music, Shanta was one of the people that really inspired me. You know, I like Shanta while he's in music. You know, some of them, not all of them, I, I should be honest. You know, and I would say plaudits to him for this collaboration with Beyonce. Um, uh, it, it, it was quite funny to me from my from my perspective, the way he was making noise about it. You know, even starting a whole uh, trend on social media, asking his fans to tweet about the song to Beyonce so that she shoots a video for her. Like, yo, did you know that Whiskey also did a collaboration on that same Lion King project? And for the first week, I don't know if it's now that Whiskey has coughed about it. Go and check his social media. He didn't even cough 
about the fact that he has a collaboration with the Aussie. But back here in Ghana, we had one art who was all over the place, screaming on top of his voice. Why? Because he has a collaboration with the Aussie. You see, this same artist was the same one who got up one day and went to insult whiskey. Are you going to see the difference here? <laughs> one is a true king, the other one. So you mean Shatawale is being a noisy Oh, maybe I mean, to a very large extent. He is a noise maker to a certain extent, you know. He inspired you. Yeah, I mean... It's... His noise making inspired you. Yeah, just the same way that another person will probably listen to me or see me or try to monitor my work out there and call me names, you know. I don't live in a glass house, so for me, I don't deliberately go out there and throw stones. But if you give me a reason to express my opinion about something that you're doing, I won't hesitate. You get me? Uh -huh. So, I guess, uh, you know. Are you still fighting with PKB? <laughs> oh, no, 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 we are not fighting. I'm not fighting with him. You know, whatever happened, it was, um, it was in the past, or it is in the past. There's something that was on my chest that I needed to say. Okay? And I said it. If that makes you hate me, that's fine. But I didn't say that because I hate you. And in fact, as I stand here today, as I sit here with you today, I do not hate the person. You know, I know I might not be one of his favorite people now because I have revealed certain things about him to the public, you know. And uh, for me, I'm not really worried because it happened to me once upon a time, you know. It is the energy you give me that I give back to you. If you don't give me the right energy, don't expect to get anything right as it were for me to, you know. I don't want to go into it. I'm sure this issue was very topical. People knew about it. Why, what happened, happened, and what the encomiums, if you like, of the issues were. You know, I feel like it's it's, it's going to be it's past. I, I don't wake up every morning thinking about it. Like, okay, so I want to fight with you. Know. For me, I just said it and it's off my chest, and I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, so back to your music. Okay. How can people buy your music? My music is available everywhere. This album you're seeing, Cosmic Vibrations, you know, this is my main album. Mm -hmm. It's got 21 records on it. Mm -hmm. uh, six, actually, five of them are bonus tracks. And these are the tracks that I have published so far, including Nyami Wumu, which video will be out tomorrow, 1st August, you know. Uh, but apart from these, the other records are nowhere online. The album will go online sometime later this year or next year. It will definitely go online. But for now, the whole idea is to be able to um, get it closer to people. You know, I know people still play CDs in their cars. Okay. So that's the reason why we have CDs of the album. So it's out. Um, if you can connect with me with, uh, on my social media and place a copy wherever you are around the world, we can post it to you. Okay. You know, if it's in Ghana here, we'll find time and just deliver it to you. It's just 10 bucks, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 10 bucks as in CDs or what? Uh, 10 bucks as in. Yes, as in cities. Okay. But obviously, if this thing is being sold, um, say, outside the companies of Ghana, mm -hmm. it might be sold in another denomination. So, depending on wherever it's being sold, but in Ghana, it's just 10 bucks. Okay. Because it's music, people have to, you know, get the vibe. So, give it to them. You know. Now, something that is sold yet to my okay. how long have you been keeping your Uh This is my second year, actually. Second year? Yes. Are you going to cut it anytime soon? Because... One Rasta was complaining the last time. He that's... couldn't carry it for a long time. It took him just six months. He said that he didn't even cut it. Okay, well, that's the person. Personally, personally, because of what I do, okay, I'm an artist first and foremost. I don't want people to just look at me only as a musician. You don't want an actor to, don't you? So tomorrow, if I get a role that is paying very well and the role requires that I take off this so I can depict a certain character. Why not? If the money is good, I'll do it. So you are all about the money? It's not all about the money, but it's work. And I expect to get paid when I work, right? And as an actor, I know that naturally I'm a character working. Today I could be this, tomorrow I could be another character, mm -hmm. okay? For now, this is me. But if there's a storyline somewhere that is being put in the content, in a movie, and that storyline requires me to have my... For example, recently, I think about two or three months ago, I shot a pilot in Spiral Productions. Uh, there's a new project they're working on and when they saw this now obviously the things i've done with them in the past i didn't have dreadlocks they wanted me to do something about it so eventually i had to braid it in a way to sort of like reveal my face you know those kind of arrangements are there too but essentially um uh it is the culture you know of the whole reggae business, if you know what I mean. So, so you speak patois too? No, I don't speak patois, but I understand. 
you know. Yeah, I, I have people that I interact with who communicate with me in Patwa. And I will just speak my normal English to them. You know, we kind of like communicate with each other, you know. And you play the guitar now? Yeah, I do. Wow. I do. I started off playing drums in church back in the days. Yeah, so, but you see, these were days when I didn't even know I was going to get into music, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but I'm trying, it's mostly. Yeah. It's been nice talking to you. Um, I would like to see you again when your head's about on your shoulder. Okay, right. I think it's on my shoulder now. Like, you mean on my back? Okay, your back. Okay, all right. And I'll keep That's it. if it will happen, if no amount of money makes you cut it. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. But I think the money is good. You know, Charlie. The money is good. You can't, you can't say no. You see, like if I ask you right now to take off this your last head, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars if you take it off. I don't know. I think about that. Okay. Thanks for coming. Coming? Well, it takes two <laughs> to do that. But since you have said it, I will pretend that I have come. Not the coming in your head. Coming, I've been coming to Ghana Weekend TV. And you are still coming. Oh, God. Well, um, keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> Have you finished coming? It's been great having you. Um, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Ghana Weekend TV. And I'm Hajar Lagunis.